After being married for just over a year, Peter Rainbart's wife, Malika, suddenly vanished without explanation. The authorities had their suspicions right away, but couldn't prove the man closest to her was involved. That was until a breakthrough in the case that came decades later, when a skull was found not far from where Malika was last seen. However, a bigger twist was yet to come. This is Monsters. Peter Rainbart first met Malika de Fernandez at a party one evening in late 1959 in England. They instantly felt sparks fly. The pair spent the rest of the night chatting over their glasses before Peter made a stunning proposal. He asked Malika to marry him. While it must have been a shock to her after only knowing this man for a few hours, she didn't entirely turn down his proposition. Clearly, Malika saw something in Peter that she liked, so she told him to give her a few days to think it over. Four days later, they were engaged. A week after that, Peter and Malika got married. She thought it was the beginning of her fairy tale. Peter was a charming, handsome man with a stable job in the airline industry. Malika must have been picturing how the rest of her life would unfold with her love, how they would start a family and build a life together. However, that illusion was soon shattered. While on their honeymoon, Peter confessed to Malika that he was gay after he was unable to consummate the marriage. Since homosexuality was a crime punishable by time in prison, the marriage was all a facade in an effort for Peter's true self to remain hidden. His position at the company could also have been threatened had the news ever come out that he was gay. So in Peter's mind, marrying Malika was his way of ensuring none of that would happen. Naturally, Malika brought up an annulment immediately. This man who she barely knew but thought she could trust had lied to her and fooled her into marriage. But as mentioned earlier, Peter was charming. He knew how to be persuasive and urged Malika to be logical about their situation. He would care for her every need. She would not have to work a day in her life, and they could travel often due to the nature of his job. Peter even added that Malika could have as many lovers as she pleased. Malika considered her options and possibly, after thinking she had already come so far, decided she would give the unconventional relationship a go. She moved in with Peter to a bungalow in Wilmslow, Manchester. What was the worst thing that could happen? However, what Peter hadn't thought through was the leverage Malika now had over him. She could leave the marriage at any time. Sure, he was affording her a certain lifestyle, but that didn't tire to him. On the other hand, Malika now knew Peter's secret, one that he was dead set on never becoming public. It wasn't long before their exchange grew fractious. Malika wanted more from Peter and was happy to threaten to reveal what she knew. Obviously, no one but Peter and Malika knew what was going on, and then, one day she vanished. Peter claimed to last see Malika in June of 1961 at their home. They had been married for a little over a year at that point, but Peter made no effort to act concerned. He was honest about the poor status of their marriage and the fact that, at the time of her disappearance, things between them were irrevocably damaged. Of course, he skipped on the details of why that was. The investigators tasked with finding Malika were immediately suspicious with Peter. However, he remained bullish in the face of their questioning and maintained he had nothing to do with where Malika was, adding that they would have to prove he was involved. The investigators thought Peter may have buried his wife in the garden, so they requested to excavate the area. He offered up no resistance, so it was no surprise when they didn't find anything. In 1963, Peter left Manchester and moved to Portsmouth. For over 10 years, Peter flew under the radar, keeping away from any suspicions of police regarding Malika. They still hadn't been able to locate her or a single piece of evidence that tied Peter to her disappearance. Since more than a decade had passed, it seemed it may have been how the story ended. Had Peter not met Paul Corgan, that is. After living in Portsmouth for 12 years, Peter met Paul Corgan in 1975. 
They entered into both a personal and business relationship, secretly dating while operating a pub together. But Peter and Paul were not two men intent on living a quiet life away from the judgmental society they lived in. Instead, they happened to share a sick perversion for the abduction and assault of young boys. They would drive down the street together, grabbing the first suitable victim they came across before inflicting horrific trauma on them. That went on for some time until a 15-year-old managed to escape the attack and report the men to the police. It didn't take long before Peter Rain Bard and Paul Corrigan were arrested and taken into custody for repeated assaults on their young victims. Shockingly, despite being convicted, both men were only sentenced to just seven years behind bars. To make matters worse, they were released after four. Peter and Paul split up after they got out of prison, with Peter making London his new home and Paul setting up in Birmingham. Then, a year later, proving the madness that was the length of time served, Paul, along with a teenager he had quote-unquote taken under his wing, abducted a 13-year-old boy who was walking home from school. That boy spent the last hours of his life terrified and being tortured. In the end, he was stabbed to death. Paul was subsequently arrested and given a life sentence. Paul had only been behind bars for a few short months when he decided he had some information to share with the authorities. He started by telling a prison guard that he knew about a murder and wanted to speak to the police. Two detectives made the trip to see him, and there, Paul told them a story about Peter and Malika. Paul claimed that Peter told him of the build-up to what happened that day back in June of 1961. Malika had arrived at the house to ask for more money, and an argument broke out. Things quickly escalated between the two, and Peter, in a rage, reached out to Malika and wrapped his hands around her throat, strangling her to death. He initially thought of calling the police, or so he said, but instead decided to drag Malika inside and dismember her body in the bathtub. He then took Malika out to the marsh near his home and threw the pieces in, one by one. The detectives took what Paul said with a grain of salt, but still followed up on his claims. When they learned Peter did, in fact, have a missing wife, it added much validity to the story. Peter was tracked down and questioned by a Cheshire detective. He was open to talking, but again denied any involvement in his wife's disappearance or murder. Paul's testimony was not enough to convict Peter of murder, so it seemed like the investigators were at another dead end. Little did they know that a discovery the following year would lead to a full confession. In mid-May of 1983, a team of peat cutters were working on a bog outside of Wilmslow when one of them noticed an odd shape in the wet ground. The round object stood out amongst its surroundings, and further inspection showed something terrifying. It was a human skull that still had some hair and soft tissue remaining. The bog happened to be not far from where Malika and Peter once lived. This time, when detectives arrived to question Peter, they had something up their sleeve. As he had done before, he began denying his involvement until they pulled out a picture of the skull and told him where it had been found. Peter then folded. He let out a big sigh and sunk into his chair, telling the detectives he thought they'd never find the truth. When he was taken into the station, Peter gave a full confession, one that matched Paul's story to the letter. He said he never intended to kill her, but the mounting pressure of losing his job and his potential arrest, coupled with the explosive argument, became too much and he snapped. As the trial neared, it seemed this case was already over. Malika had been found and Peter had confessed. He would be sentenced to a lengthy prison term and that chapter would close. However, there was a major twist on the horizon. You see, the skull found in the bog was sent off to Oxford University, where it underwent various forensic tests. One of those results revealed that it was not Malika. Instead, it was a woman who had died sometime around 250 CE, when the Romans occupied Britain. The bog had encased her skull and preserved it for over 1,000 years, and Peter had confessed while looking at the skull of the wrong person. It was an ironic ending to this twisted story that made national headlines. In any other instance, a finding like that would have been extraordinary enough. However, when it directly led to a murder being solved after more than 20 years, it was truly something you couldn't make up. Peter Rain Bart was sentenced to life in prison and died at Norwich Hospital in 1995. 
As of today, Malika's remains have never been found. If you're a fan of true crime, hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss an episode. You can also hit like or leave us a comment. You can check out our other show, Somewhere Sinister, on YouTube or anywhere that you listen to podcasts. If you'd like to support the show, check out our merchandise at thisismonsters.com. The link is in the description. Thanks again, and be safe.